is this? Holy crap, check this out. I got a fish. tried fishing with my new bait caster reel. Never used a bait caster before. First time I was introduced with, to a bait caster was when I was young up at uh, my stepdad's cabin. And uh, I remember my my grandpa, my step grandpa, had a bait caster for his musky fishing. And I remember touching it and every single time I touched it I turned it into a big spider web. So I never wanted to use it. So, ever since then, I always use just a normal spin rod. A little setup like this, little Abu Garcia with an ugly stick. It's always just been a little bit easier to go to. A little bit easier to go fishing. So about a month back, I ordered a bait caster reel after watching a bunch of videos. Jigging with Jordan, watching a whole bunch of people and showing me how to actually use a bait caster why you know why they're beneficial get a lot more accurate with your cast be able to get a lot more distance with your cast so I thought okay you know what maybe I'll try it again I've been, it's been a while kind of have a good understanding of how these things work we'll try it out so I get it I get it all reeled up it was already kind of interesting just to see how that kind of stuff works as far as like putting the line on the reel and on the spool and getting it all lined up. Had Scarlett help me out, it was pretty cool. But uh, yeah, so I brought it out here and after watching a couple of YouTube videos on how to actually use the bait caster. <laughs> first, first shot, first uh, cast. Cast it out, it turns into a, whoa, 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 did we just have something there? I think we might've just had a little bite. Wow, so uh, not sure what happened there. I might have got caught on a rock, might have had a bite, who knows. We'll try back out again. So yeah, I cast it out, turns into a giant spider web. Kind of a pain in the butt. Kind of trying to figure out how to get out of the, the spider web, but uh, you know, wasn't really feeling it. So put it down, took the spin, took the spin rod back out, started casting this guy out. See if we can get another, another strike right here. No, nothing. The thing about fishing in Germany is, is that uh, all the lakes, all the lakes are usually owned and managed by a club, by like a fishing club. So unlike the states, 
when you go fishing in Germany, you usually have to have a daily, weekly, or annual pass to do it. Generally. Like a permit, like a per day thing. So you have to pay for it, generally. So here in the Rhine, the Rhine River, I've been fishing for a couple years now. Fished for a couple years, and uh, I've never actually caught anything on the Rhine. So, interesting how it works. So to fish here on the Rhine River, you have to have what's called a Rhine shine. And essentially what that means is you need to purchase an annual permit that allows you to go fishing between certain kilometer points on the Rhine River for certain fish during that year, during that period of the season. And uh, yeah, you pay a certain amount of money. I believe this year I paid 65 or 70 and I get to fish out here for a year, come out whenever I want in between the certain kilometer points. Oops, that was a crappy cast. And uh, yeah, just try it out. So, like I said, I've never caught anything on the Rhine, unfortunately. Um, I've heard a lot of stories about people catching big fish, but for the most part, it's always been carp or catfish out here. It's just like the more typical fish that people catch. A lot of bottom feeding. To be quite honest, people usually come out with tents in the evening and stay all night, and they fish for catfish using their bell fishers. They got you got a bell on the rod and what happens is when a, when a big cat or a big carp comes up, fishermen come over and uh, you know the cat rings the bell and they get up out of their tent drinking probably all night and uh, they go and catch a fish. So yeah, it's more of a carp bottom feeding type of place for, for, for fish here on the Rhine. However, I have heard some stories of some nice walleye and some nice uh, Hesht or Northern Pike. So coming from Wisconsin, that's been kind of more of my typical go-to fish, kind of more of what I've I've really been looking to kind of catch around here. So you know, I've really been trying to do it. I've been using jerk baits, I've been using spin baits. Right now I'm using this larger, larger size Rapala shake bait. And uh, I'm just trying to catch anything out here. I'm not trying to even get a bite. I really don't, I mean, I like bottom fishing, but um, you know, given the time frame, I don't really like, I don't really want to sit out here, so to do that, so I'd rather just do a little bit of bait casting for a while. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I've heard a lot of stories on why it's, why it's not really the best place for fishing. Um, from some professional German fishermen around here, and basically what they've said is that there's already so much natural food here in the ecosystem, it's that the fish just really aren't attracted too much to artificial bait. So it's just been a challenge to uh, actually try to catch some type of fish. So, yeah, I've had some other, exp oh, oh, what is this? Holy crap, check this out. I got a fish. Whoa, check this out. <laughs> I got a fish. <laughs> Hi. Happy Hell. Wow. Happy Dank. Hey. Nice. <laughs> nice. Wow. Richtig nice. Du rettest mir den Tag. Oh, wow. Du rettest mir den Tag. Wow. Check this out. I caught a little little northern pike here. Ay, ay, ay. Wow. Stay here, big buddy. Wow. Check that out. Really nice. Oh, danke schön. Danke schön. Yeah, genau. Ich habe endlich eine Fisch hier in, in Deutschland ge uh, angefangen. Yeah, sehr schön. Guck mal. Und ich mag auch gerne Film auch dazu. Danke schön. Danke für die nette Gespräche. Petri Dank. Wow. Ich bin auf einer schönen Stelle am Suchen gewesen, aber irgendwie nichts gefunden. Und ich dachte, ich bleib mal, halt mal kurz hier an und sehe ja. dich gerade und zack und. Und sie sind meine, sie sind meine, mein Glückbringer. Vielen Dank. Ich sagen. Ja. Vielen Dank. Danke auch. Ja, das ist sehr schön. <lacht> Eine Erlebnis hier in ja. Deutschland. Ich habe eigentlich wirklich nichts hier ge ähm, gefangen. Okay. Auf der Rhein, muss ich sagen. In Kleine Sea habe ich was ge ähm, angefangen, aber nichts mehr. Sehr schön. <lacht> cool. Okay. Ja. Aber ein bisschen zu klein. Ja. Ja, aber ist okay.
Sind Sie auch Angelmann? Ja, ich wollte nämlich eigentlich mich auf den Ansitz setzen, aber okay. am Main bin ich weggetrieben worden, weil irgendwelche Leute, die haben da geschleppt und sind mir zehnmal durch die Route okay. gefahren und dann macht es auch keinen Spaß. Das stimmt, das stimmt. Ja, manchmal ist das ganz schwierig. Eieiei. Ja. Ei, ei. Ei, ei. Ei, ei, ei. Ah. Jetzt hat mich ein bisschen an, angefasst. Ein bisschen. So, got a fish. Cut the ever out of my thumb, but got a fish. going on with the thumb situation here in a second. Ah. So, finally caught a fish here in Germany. Awesome. So, back to fishing with Shane in Germany. After that northern pike just ripped the crap out of my hand. I'm gonna still keep out here for a little bit. Until it gets a little bit darker. So now I got a little bit more motivation to continue trying to fish. But yeah, like I was saying, the other places that I fished here in Germany have been uh, mostly either this river here, or I've also fished in some stocked ponds. And to be quite honest, the stock ponds really weren't what I was looking for. It was just, it was too, it was too much of like an artificial feeling, you know? So it was stocked with a whole bunch of trout and uh, yeah, it just, it just wasn't fun. It was like, it was one of those where you go every single cast, you know, you cast out and you just know you're going to get something. So it wasn't very fun. It wasn't, it wasn't really enjoyable. But yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of lakes that you can go to, but generally what you gotta do is you gotta either be a member or pay some type of a permit if they'll let outsiders in. So they don't always they don't always let outsiders in, but for the most part, if you get to know the the club, you join the club, pay your annual dues, do your a uh, couple times a year clean up and be a part of the crew, they'll usually let you fish there. You know, so it's. There's definitely some differences between fishing in Germany and fishing in the States from at least my experience. I, what I miss about being in the States is that uh, you can just kind of take your pole, you're driving down the road, you see something that looks a little bit interesting, you can pretty much just hop right on over there and uh, pull, the, pull the pole out and just go fishing for the most part. You, know, you can pretty much touch any body of water you want and just throw, throw a bait in. But over here in Germany, it's uh, much more regulated. So it makes things a little bit more challenging and limited, but it is what it is. At least I get to get, to get out here and experience the, the, the nature, uh, experience the fishing. Oh, not sure what that was, if that was another rock or if that was a bite. So I don't know, I kind of feel like I've got a little bit more motivation now that uh, you know, I actually got some fish around here. So it's kind of cool. I kind of don't want to look at my thumb now that I know I got this big massive deep cut over here. I'm kind of scared to take a look at it. So, But yeah, there's there's definitely a lot of differences between fishing in Germany and fishing in the United States. This river fishing is, is quite interesting as well. There's I know we haven't seen one yet, which is 
kind of strange, but usually there's a lot of big barges that cross here. A lot of cargo, um, a lot of salvage, coal, a lot of those kind of things that they ship down these riverways. And also, as you can hear, fish just jumped over there. Also, as you can hear, there's a, a lot of traffic. Like right behind me, there's a main road. And uh, that main road has a lot of traffic pretty much all the time. So maybe a little bit loud, might not hear me too well. But uh, yeah, so really cool. Still can't believe I'm just jacked that I got to catch that beautiful, beautiful uh, pike. That was really excellent. Really, really think that was unique, unique experience. Was on camera too at the same time then the this German gentleman came up to me and he was all jacked because I see him just get out of his car get out of his car over here and walk right up to me as I'm as I'm fishing and he comes up and he sees that uh, you know I catch a fish right here and he's like wow you just made my day he was all excited and I was excited and kind of got off camera a little bit but uh, he basically told me that he fishes on the other side of the river over there and it just and there's too many people and it's just yeah it wasn't really wasn't really his thing so now he's over here not a lot of bothersome people and I wished him good luck he came up to me and gave me the typical German uh, good luck fisherman word which is uh, Petri Heil Petri Heil means uh, I'll put I'll put it in I'll put it in the description, but uh, Petri Heil, it's, it's almost like a good luck good luck between fishermen type of thing. It's almost like a code word for fishermen in between them. So you respond with somebody says to you as a greeting, it's Petri Petri Heil, and you say Petri Donk. And in hunting, they have something similar. It's Weidmanns Heil. Weidmanns Heil. It's what uh, it's what you say when you you want to give somebody a, a hunting greeting same type of thing. It's kind of interesting. So, guy came over, probably thought I was a total douche. You know, <laughs> come over here and I pull out my little needle nose pliers trying to remove the pike from the hook and cut my finger all up. And I'm walking around, a couple other people walked up at the same time, saw me bleeding all over the place and about that same time then all of them just uh, decided to move on out. They weren't really having much more of that. So, too much blood. And it was kind of gross. I'm a little worried about some infection with this river and that nasty fish that laid his claws into me. Yeah. But still, that was pretty cool that I was able to bring a fish in. So, probably not going to stay out here too much longer. I got this, got my shirt that I had on, took it off and wrapped it around my thumb just so I'd put some pressure on the, on the wound a little bit and stop the bleeding. So, see my buddy over here, the guy that came over and talked to me, he's getting all set up, nice and comfortable looking over there. As I was talking about earlier, um, I think this gentleman is, uh, I think he just fell actually, I hope he's okay. Um, he's probably going to be doing some bottom fishing, I'm assuming, looking for some carp. The one thing I was supposed to do that I was supposed to do with that fish when I caught it is I was supposed to measure it and record it, but I was kind of so lost in the moment there that uh, you know, with my finger getting all bloody, it's just so excited that I caught something over here that uh, yeah, that I didn't really get to it. And plus, the fish hopped off and fell right back into the water, so wasn't really a whole lot I can do with the whole measurement. But I would probably say. Given the size of it, I would probably say it was about 22 inches based on my my old knowledge of catching fish back in Wisconsin. You know, catching catch northern pike. So, well, that was a really, really unique experience. I'm really excited that I was able to share that with everybody. The fact that I was able to catch something on camera, bring it in and really just... Uh, yeah, just get that motivation back, you know, it's really going to give me some motivation to get back out here again. Probably got to figure, you know, you got, it's always a learning experience and uh, that learning experience was, was particularly due to 
what I need to do as far as like next time I should probably have some type of a netting solution um, at least just to bring it in because I'm kind of standing here on some stairs it's a little bit awkward and uh, potentially some gloves too I didn't really have any gloves on that probably would have been been good just to avoid that that, uh, that either the hook or the or the tooth that stuck right in me so yeah it was really cool. You know, all these other people are sitting around here waiting for hours and hours and hours to catch something off the bottom. And I'm over here bait casting, kind of doing something different, doing my own thing, just like I would in the States. And uh, sure enough, you know, fish are fish. So, it's pretty awesome. Pretty excited about that.